Namaste, good day, buenos días. Uh, I'm Coyote Alberto Ruz and I am dressing, addressing all of you from uh, Tepoztlán, the sacred valley of Tepoztlán in the center of Mexico near the ceremonial center of the pyramid of Teposteco and very near also from our eco village where we're coyote and half distance from both the temple and our eco village, our community. And uh, I've been asked by Steffi, our Red Queen, to share with you some messages, some words, some stories concerning my role in, in the whole movement of the 13 moons, change of the 13 moons calendar and my relationship with uh, mi hermano Jose, Jose Arguelles. Um, I grew up in the south of Mexico. My father was an archaeologist, a Mayan uh, specialist, and my mother was originally from that area, from that territory, from the south of Mexico, from Campeche, in the Yucatan Peninsula. So I had the incredible luck, uh, destiny, to be able to grow among the temples, pyramids, and uh, ceremonial centers, and uh, tombs, tombs, tombs. Um, in the year 1952, when I was seven years old, after four years of work, in the Temple of the Inscriptions in Palenque, my father opened for the first time to the eyes of uh, the world after 1,200 years of um, having kept in the heart of this temple a big uh, mystery, a big sacred secret. He unearthed the chamber on the month of June, 15 June, the the chamber of a um, funerary um, uh, chamber from a great king, Halachwinig, a great uh, ruler, uh, like all the Mayan rulers, mostly spiritual and political leaders, and uh, his name Pakal, Pakal Botan, which was the name that many people got to know him. Um, Back in the years um, 90s, 87, 88, first in the 80s, in the 86, I got in contact for the first time with Jose Aloidina Reyes. I was writing a book uh, which, uh, which was published in the States, Rainbow Nation Without Borders Towards an Ecotopian Millennium. So I was writing and working on that book in which the heart of the whole subject was the... So I spent several years studying about the different interpretations of the archetype rainbow in the different cultures and different times and different uh, uh, civilizations. And then uh, out of that, information slowly started to build, you know, the index from a book telling about how the rainbow has become in this moment the only symbol in nature that represents the inclusion of darkness and light and the manifestation of all colors in everything that surrounds us. So, Departing from there, eh, back in California, while I was living there in, uh, in the Northern California, a small book called uh, The Rainbow Warriors, eh, dreams, prophecies, and stories about, uh, yes, about um, a vision 
that came from the uh, original people from the Americas, that it would come a moment in the history of humanity in which the water would not be able to be drink, the air would be poisonous, the sun itself would be burning and creating havoc and problems for the rest of life, and the earth itself would be producing food that was also not good for our bodies, not good for uh, nature, not good for, you know, for our economy, for anything. So from there, I started to look in history for different experiences or movements or organizations or individuals that had been uh, focusing on it, on the symbol of a rainbow. And then I came very soon with the story of the Rainbow Warrior ship from the Greenpeace, which was also a movement that was started back in the 70s as a response to all the environmental, ecological problems that we were suddenly facing and that we continue facing every year more and more. So I started to see that there was a part of the, the Greenpeace organization. There was many other movements that we had been uh, flourishing in the 70s that had as a symbol the rainbow. Uh, out of that, I, we got to know while we were traveling with our group of theater, the Illuminated Elephants in Northern California, Oregon, Washington. We get to know also the Rainbow Gatherings, the National Rainbow Gatherings, and the International Rainbow Gatherings. So we became one of the tribes to take part of this large proposal, vision, manifestation that is that a prophecy that becomes history, a prophecy are talking about a time in which humanity could not longer be living because have lost all connection or respect of the, for nature, for mother nature, and in which uh, there would be a, a new movement, a new nation, tribes, families that would identify with the rainbow as their symbol. And then uh, from there, the book started to grow, and I started to get in contact with people who could, uh, who already had a connection with this inclusive symbol, archetype, and uh, Jose Arguelles was one of them. Was one of them because um, as part of my work in the investigation for that book, I was looking for the difference between a warrior, a spiritual warrior, and a soldier an army of soldiers. And then I understood that uh, the spiritual seeker, the spiritual, those who walk the path of uh, peace, and basically have a different relationship with the enemy. The enemy is not somebody from outside, it's not the other. The enemy are the inner, enemies we have with ourselves. So I understood that the spiritual, you know, warriors was a category of, uh, of uh, human beings that through history in all the different cultures and times, there had been always individuals, groups, small groups that assumed themselves like spiritual um, warriors. So I came to know about the work, about the book, from um, Chogin Trumpa, you know, this teacher from Tibet who had published with an uh, editorial called Mandala, a, a book called Mandala, from uh, an author called Jose Arguelles. So I got to know that uh, this uh, connection between spiritual uh, warriors and then uh, Jose Arguelles and Mandala, the book of Mandala, in which in the middle of that book, there is a whole page of Pakal, of the tombstone of Pakal in Palenque. So I wanted to know what was the connection between Jose Arguelles, Palenque, uh, Pakal, and this movement that he had uh, called. You know, he was calling for a movement to 
on um, on the year uh, 18, 1878 for an encounter in the whole world called to all the 144,000 uh, dances of the sun or dances from the rainbow rainbow warriors the harmonic convergence so all of that combination brought me to to get in contact with Jose and to start uh, exchanging with him letters in the year 86, 87 and 88 year in which him and Loidin came to Mexico uh, to do a pilgrimage to seven different ceremonial Mayan centers. This uh, pilgrimage was going to be accompanied, you know, by spiritual leaders from many different nations, cultures, civilizations, times, and uh, among them, Jose and Loidin Arguez were also coming to take part on this pilgrimage. We met in Palenque. We met at the doors of the ceremonial center of Palenque, Nachan. And the first steps inside of the ceremonial center, there is a tomb, a small tomb, which is the tomb of my father. It's a tomb in which the ashes of my, my father uh, rest in a small pyramid, just in front of the pyramid of the Red Queen, or Temple 13 in Palenque and Temple of Inscriptions. So we had a first encounter right there. Then we asked permission to the elders Alacandones to start this pilgrimage in the region of Palenque, La Canja, you know, and then from there to Campeche, Yucatan, Tabasco, the different places where we had been uh, selected to be part of this pilgrimage. Um, since then, 88 until now uh, the history and the biography of Jose Reyes and my biography had been always uh, yeah, linked we are part of the same chain of the same chain of uh, seekers of uh, activists visionaries in which uh, we came together with others who are doing the same work of helping humanity to transcend this era in which a global civilization is coming to an end in a new planetary by regional oriented uh, society and you know it emerging so a little change in the scenario uh, the first images were taken in another house where I've been resting for uh, the last month and a half and now in the house, in our house and we were collect in the eco-village. So I continue from here now. This is our natural surrounding. Um, the book I was working on ended up being called Rainbow Nation Without Borders. Toward an Ecotopian Millennium, and the introduction was made by Starhawk. And when I sent the book to Jose in the year 1989, 90, for around there, he wrote a small uh, paragraph about the book, and I want to read it. I think it's important. Uh, Jose says, What Theodore Rusak What Theodore Rosak is making of the counterculture was to the 60s and the 70s and Marilyn Ferguson acquiring conspiracy was to the 80s. Alberto Roosevelt feel Rainbow Nation Without Borders will be to the 90s. Weaving together radical history visionary politics and Native American prophecy, Alberto Ruz Winfield's message is bold and clear. If the Rainbow Nation does not become the mainstream 
of the 1990s and the 20th century, you can forget about the 21st century. Jose Arguelles, author of The Mayan Factor and Earth Ascending. Since that first encounter in Palenque, Jose and me, and Loidin at the beginning, and then later with Stephanie, we traveled to many places together. We were together in Spain, in Italy, we were together in Colombia, in Peru, in Brazil, obviously in Mexico and the States. And then uh, more and more, we got to be known as like the Hermonos. Mono is monkey, he's a monkey, I'm a monkey. And I always said, if we would be 13 monkeys, each one of a different sign, would change the world. We never found the others. We found six, seven, eight, never 13. Um, it's very important, the fact to recognize archetypes as a form of transmitting uh, information which is not recorded in the mind, it's recorded in the whole DNA. And uh, that's why the archetype of uh, rainbow, it's appealing since the little babies to all the different cultures of the world. All of them had a god or a goddess who was called rainbow in different names. And the rainbow is this bridge who unites the underworld, the surface world, and the upper world. Just like in the tomb of Pakal. You have the upper world, the world, and the underworld. The place of the Borontiku, the lords of the night. And uh, in the more than 20 years that we were together, in different moments that we were together, we collaborated in many activities, forums, events, festivals, encounters, including the Call of the Condor, which was an idea who came out in Caracas, Venezuela, where we were staying in the same house that Jose and Luidin were staying. And then uh, with the family Boyer. And um, it was clear that we were preparing for big changes. And big changes have to go to transformations, to things we have to leave behind. Many things that we have to leave behind, ideas, attachments, uh, addictions, all of that. We have to get rid of all of that if further so you can walk lightly on the surface of the earth, the mother earth, and do what you came to do uh, in, in this time, in this lifetime. The call of the condor came out when speaking with Jose I said it's very important the change of uh, um, the time, the concept time, because it brings us back to a cultures in which they were not related, time with money or with progress. It was just a form of exchange. But now it's not that that we know it. So the call of the counter was an experience to create some of the, per, you know, the proposals from the rainbow gatherings, but also some of those from the original gatherings, and also from the eco-village movement, and also from the indigenous people, because they all, all our cultures had a moment in which they all gathered to celebrate, to trade, and the rainbow gatherings have precisely that uh, purpose. So 
At that encounter in the call of the Condor, we had nearly a thousand people coming from 37, 80 countries. And the road, path that leads to Machu Picchu in Peru, high Peru, 4,000 meters altitude among volcanoes. And we camped. We camped. And that's when, for the first time, Stephanie was representing the movement of the law of change of time, law of time. She was there. You know. She was there and she was introduced to all the big tribes in which uh, since then she's been part. So after that encounter, uh, we met again in Brazil, for instance, in which and an encounter of Jose um, called for a, uh, yeah, it was a very important name. You know, we were thinking about right, human rights, we were thinking about uh, the rights of uh, nature, we are talking about the rights of uh, black people, indigenous people, tall people, small people, children, women, gay, no. But we have never thought really about the importance of the the rights of the living being from which we take part. We are part. Mother Earth and nature are not separated. We are nature in one of its transformations of revolutions in which he has become a living being. A living being and uh, everything, all the different ecosystems support our life system. The Earth life systems. So it was, we understood that we had come to the moment, to the time in which ideologies, religious, nationalities, economy, education, politics, decision making, all of that had to be transformed. And the audition councils for uh, rainbow warriors or for guardians of the earth, which is the basis of, of uh, of the call of the condor and call of the Beja Flora in Brazil and all the different encounters that we have created in Spain, in Mexico, in Colombia, call of the mountain, call of uh, Quetzalcoatl, call of, uh, of the deer, are events where is nature calling human nature to integrate for a week and to live as we would like to live the rest of our lives. So that's what we learned from the rainbow, from the rainbow gatherings. And we brought those ideas, those proposals, those visions uh, into South America with the Rainbow Peace Caravan. The Rainbow Peace Caravan was bringing that and seeding those, uh, those ideas, those visions, those proposals everywhere we went. We were, for instance, together in Costa Rica with uh, Hussein Moedin, an encounter of UFOs. So we had an encounters with extraterrestrial uh, people who came to that event, which we have to confess, there were people from the Rainbow Peace Caravan who turned for that in event in, in San Jose, Costa Rica, in Heredia. Uh, they turned into extraterrestrials. And uh, I was a translator for Jose into the language of these people from the Pleiades, and the language of the Pleiades translated for the more than a thousand people who are in Costa Rica participating in that event. So in Brazil, Brasilia, the encounter was for the rise of the biosphere. No. The rights of the biosphere was the beginning of this event. This Congress in Brasilia was totally revolutionary because while humanity, we continue struggling to get small you know, rights every time, rights you know, for the blind people, right? for the short people, for the fat people, for the, you know, all the different uh, possibilities of gender, um, changes and transformations, but uh, 
what happened with the rights of the biosphere? What happened with the rights of the noosphere? What happened with the rights of everything in which the Earth takes part, is part? You know, and all with her, all of us, all living beings together with her. So that event in Brasilia was for me very important because they understood that we could not stay only in the limits of having rights for us. We had to recognize the rights of everything existing. And basically that became in the next coming years uh, the most important direction of my life. The Rainbow Peace Caravan traveled for 13 years in South America, Central South America. We visited and we lived in uh, hundreds of communities of 17 different countries. Our community traveling tribe uh, consisted in 20, 25, up to 35 people, sometimes from 12 different countries, speaking 12 different languages, all ages, living in buses, and going from town to town, to community to community, to indigenous community, to cities, to jails, to parks, everywhere, universities, to continue sharing everything we have learned from the 13th uh, Moon Movement, from the Original Movement, from the Ecovillage Movement, and indigenous peoples movement, territories, language, culture, traditions, times, concepts of time. And uh, it became very important, you know, to see that we had to start to see larger, had a larger cosmovision, which I think Arguelles, Jose Arguelles was one of the greatest visionaries from the 20 and from the 21st century. His uh, perspective on history was, I have not seen anybody to describe history like he has described it. The eras of uh, civilizations, one after the other one. Um, in the year 2010, the Rainbow Peace Caravan, after traveling four years in Brazil, the last four years all over Brazil, we returned back to Mexico. The bus returned, the Mazorca, which is our spaceship, mother ship, returned back to Mexico. And we continue participating and organizing events in different parts of Mexico with the same purpose, unification of movements, networks, individuals, tribes, and the creation of uh, one week um, peace villages, ceremonial, temporary peace villages. So we have done that, and from the people we have trained, which is hundreds of people who have trained with that uh, design of way of living, now there is groups all over Latin America who are organizing events with the same purpose, with the same design. And uh, when we returned to Mexico, we decided to do it in the city, Mexico City. I was invited to work for the government of Mexico City, together with uh, Veronica, who was my companion in the last years that we were traveling and continue. We continue being together here in Huehuecoy. Um, we, yeah, we created a new pedagogy, you know, a different pedagogy, a different way of learning and teaching, of becoming eternal apprentices and eternal teachers as well. And um, when we came back to Mexico, we saw that the most of the population is now moving from the rural areas, indigenous areas, territories, to the cities, and that uh, the main problems that we're facing now are specifically also from the point of view, social point of view and environmental point of view, are affecting people in the cities. So we created, we designed a program called Eco Neighborhoods, in which again, we all we had learned 
all the experiences that I have learned and we have taken, you know, from all the different movements and people that has inspired us, we just share it. We share it for the people who have no access to that kind of information, of experiences. So, in Mexico for three years, Mexico City, we were doing the same uh, programs, rainbow pedagogy applied in the cities. And then after that, for a year, we lived in the state of Morelos, which is the state in which our village where we call it a site. And then uh, since the year 2013, uh, is when I heard for the first time two governors, uh, the governor of, uh, president of uh, Bolivia, Evo Morales, and of Ecuador, uh, uh, Rafael Correa, who had changed their constitutions, their federal constitutions to include the recognition of the earth, mother nature, Pachamama, as a living being with rights of its own. And then I said, all my preparation of my life is for that purpose. My preparation has and continue now being, I can use it so we can use uh, all we have uh, yeah, assimilated articulated, learned, put together all the work of networking we have created, us and all the other movements, we are now facing right now in this moment a situation, a global situation that the earth and the living beings of the earth, human living beings, have never experienced before. And we're getting there. Uh, the, book, the book of Rainbow Nation was translated and new editions were published in the States, in Mexico, in Spain, in Brazil, in Italy. And uh, new movements started adopting the rainbow as the symbol, recognizing it like a fundamental uh, yeah, archetype for a time in which we have to be including. We cannot continue excluding those who we don't, who we don't like. Because other people is gonna exclude us because they are not gonna like us. They are not gonna like our ideas, way of dressing, what we eat, what we believe, or how we speak, how we live. So basically, inclusion is fundamental in this time. So rights of Mother Earth, rights of nature, rights of Pachamama, of Gaia, became since 2013 fundamental for me, together with all the other learnings. And um, so we decided with a group of people representing different movements that we had to leave an imprint in the history, human history, and we organized the first international forum for the rights of Mother Earth in Mexico City in the year 2016. And in this uh, event, which lasted five days, we basically had three days in which we brought together some of the most important um, speakers, and when I say most important in the world, we had people from Bhutan, from India, from Brazil, from China, from um, Every, most all countries from Europe and from the United States and then from South America, from different parts of Mexico, indigenous people. And uh, each one of those different uh, days was dedicated to understand and to learn how the different movements can integrate what they are working on with what the others are working on. So we had obviously representatives from the movement of change of calendar for the, the moons, people who was working, um, uh, who had been working with women, with food, with indigenous people, with the villages, with health, with education, with politics. All of those people could share for the first time all that information, all that experience for three days with, you know, people like Madana Shiva from India, Leonardo Boff from uh, 
from Brazil, um, Sandu Chetri from, uh, from Bhutan, Mumta Ito from uh, Finland. Uh, fundamentally, we were trying to set up a strategy to create a world movement. A world movement in which all the different movements have their part. A world in which all the movements have their part. All the social, spiritual, um, artistic, uh, educational, economical, political, uh, ecological movements can found a way to integrate, to create a new society, to create a new world, to do a change of paradigm. That is exactly what all of us have been, since the prophecy of the rainbow, we have listening and we have been listening about that. But now, finally, it's the earth itself who's telling us, your time is over. Now, it is nature who's gonna dictate, it's the cosmos who's gonna dictate, is the weather who's gonna dictate, is the noosphere, is the biosphere, who's gonna dictate the next steps of evolution of our, our human species. And if we don't adjust, if we don't go along to what nature and the cosmos is telling us every second. If we continue trying to return to a nat you know, natural state that has never been natural, the type of society in which we live is totally, 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 totally unsustainable. So it's all, if we continue in that path, we're coming to destruction, to extinction. Human species, species can disappear, can disappear if we don't do that change. And uh, what we're living now exactly has to do with that. And there was a very important preparation for, for this event in which we are now. We was last year in Teotihuacan, here in Mexico and in Palenque, where uh, again, our dear sister, the Red Queen, with all the movement of the law of time, called for an event uh, with which more than 300, 400 people came, basically from more than 50, 40, 50 people, 40,000, I don't know, out of uh, 40 different nationalities, including very large groups from, from Asia, from China, from Japan, from, uh, from, those, uh, from the islands, from, uh, from different uh, islands from Asia. But we had people from everywhere. And this encounter in Teotihuacan, it was again um, getting the people together, re remembering that we were going to celebrate this year, you know, uh, Time Shift 2020. So the circumstances happening over there in the world, in the cosmos, climate change, all of that are finally synchronizing to the fact that us humans have to work together with nature no, and not separated from nature. We have to be constantly taking examples from Mother Nature to see what we can do as human species so we can survive like a, like a species. Um, in that sense, I think it's very important this event we're having now, which is celebrating the harmonic convergence you know, uh, the harmonic convergence is, is now come since 70, 71, that the first 70, 50, 69, 70, 71, that many of those different events, the Rainbow Gatherings, the Greenpeace, um, the movement of uh, Dia de la Tierra, Earth Day, all of those different things, suddenly it was just like our generation, which are uh, we are all coming from a mutation from the 45s, from the second, coming out from the Second World War. All of us started to become young people in the 68s, not 69, 70, and to say we have to change everything. And that's what we've been doing since then. That's why I live now for almost 38 years in an eco village in this, which is Mexico, in Mexico. That's why we did the caravan. 
that's what the latest movements and events and concerts right now happening everywhere is to celebrate that we are the possibility we have the possibility now to do the important changes radical changes that can well make the sentence of jose if um if the rainbow nation does not become the mainstream that we can forget about the 21st century. Now we are in the 21st century, and uh, that's why we're here. That's why uh, it's important to continue doing the things that we know that we have to continue doing. We have a destiny. We know the destiny of our species, of our Earth. We know the species of our civilization. We know this civilization, global civilization, is collapsing, and we have been creating the basis from this new uh, society, communities, uh, in the last 34 years. So, um, I want to thank all of you who have invited me. Um, those that we met in Teotihuacan last year, and those that we were going to meet virtually, but there is no such thing like virtually. The virtuality and the no sphere are part of the same thing. And the real world is now become virtual and the virtual world has become real. We have returning to the present time in which it is not gonna be any more line, like a line, line, linear time, but the cyclical time we're gonna understand that we live in a per permanent present in which we're spiraling, spiraling around the different cycles and that's how we're moving like the chakras up the energy and down and this you know uh, the event of time shift 20 and 20 is precisely so again we can meet by we can meet by the millions you know and we can do that jump we can do that jump that quality jump that's going to allow us to create the basis of that civilization in which we all believe we are a part. And that's why, that's my message for all of you. Thank you very much again. The rainbow always goes with me wherever I go. So I say, like I started, Namaste, Ometeotl, Omatakuyasi. And let's sing together. Let's sing together that song that was given to us by this movement. And who says, Ayum Hunaku Eva Maya Eva Ho. Ayum Hunaku Eva Maya Eva Ho. Peace among humans and peace with nature is the beginning to the cosmic peace era. We are part of it. Aho.